Well, that was some voter madness, wasn't it? Yeah, guys, that was awesome. It was a close race, let me tell you. <laughs> All right, guys, welcome back to the studio. Ryan, a.k.a. Bloodshot Airbrushing, and yes, it was a close race, guys. And, you know, this kind of verifies and validates... Me sitting over here a night or two ago saying, ah, I just don't know. <laughs> yeah, guys, the consensus is, is, man, it's a hard one to choose. Well, the winner is because there can be only one, guys. Oh, what do you think? Ah, <laughs> well, we had number one, guys. And I really didn't mind that. It really gave us all of the body, some wings coming up. I would have had, you know, a wing going all the way up with the bottom wrapping around, coming in the forefront of the paw, holding onto a pillar inside the castle, some broken pillars in the background, the flames just kind of glowing up this whole corner of the inside of the window, possibly having the hand. But the more I looked at it, that hand coming out that window, that perspective is a little off, guys. Originally, I drew that to be inside. The hand would have been breaking apart some of the castle from the inside, not grasping onto the window seal. So it wasn't working, guys. And I think a lot of you guys may have agreed. Number one is done, guys. Number two. Number two. It's bigger. That's right, guys. Number three, Shibi. There wasn't really much difference between number one and number two. Having that hand on this side would have given it another 3D effect. But I really think what's going to make this pop, and I think a lot of you guys agreed, is having that fire coming right out over top. Um, what I'm going to do is I am going to use this hand over here. Maybe on this side, this is some metal work. I don't know, man. Maybe we'll get into doing some hand on this side. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Definitely going to work in a hand onto this side, gripping onto the bottom of the seal instead of the side, and possibly crumbling away at it. For those of you who don't know, and I guess that's probably the vast majority because I never really explained it. <laughs> Alright guys, this is going to be my logo. So it's going to be a big old bloodshot airbrushing. I'm going to paint it steel. So it's going to be all metal with the letters looking like they are just like ah, fire and lava in behind, just piercing bright. Um, so that's going to be that floating over top of everything. So this is actually even going to cast a shadow onto the neck of my dragon that's coming behind it. So I think the whole thing is going to have a real neat sort of layer upon layer effect, guys. Yeah, number three, guys. Bigger the better, and I agree, guys. What do you think? We're going to fill that whole window with a dragon. Um, there was a lot of feedback, and it was amazing, guys. Ideas that even I hadn't even considered that are now going to improve this project immensely. Um, some ideas I have considered... I'm, I'm just as dark as some of you guys too, uh, but realize that this is going in a family mall, guys. Uh, little Johnny can't be walking up to that sign and be like, oh, dragons. Oh, he's killing and eating everybody. <laughs> yeah, Johnny, no. <laughs> nah, guys, that wouldn't cut it. Um, yeah, I know. I know. Sometimes we just got to use our powers for good, guys. It's not always dark and demented. You saw the last couple of videos. We can be bright and colorful, too. <laughs> All right, guys. Let's get right down to it.
I got myself some photocopies, guys. Um, there was a comment saying that there are some possibly better ways to do this. I just do it in my printer up in the mezzanine. But that means three sheets of paper for one dragon. And I'm going to want multiple stencils. So, guys, I'm going to have to line up these little pieces of paper here, tape them on the back. Well, what I actually do is I line them up on the front, just a little tab of tape on either side. Then I flip it over and do a line of tape across the whole paper. And you know what? Me talking about explaining it would probably go a lot further if I just went ahead and did it. All right, guys, check it out. All right, guys, so first thing I'm going to do here is I'm just going to grab the original reference. I'm just going to tape her down to the wall there with an eye shot. So if I do have any questions or concerns when I'm laying down my reference, the big photocopies, I can always refer back to it, guys. And I like to uh, flip her up just to double check underneath, make sure that they're lined up. And this is what I was alluding to, guys. Tab on either side, flip her over, and tape her down. And I'm going to have to do this a few times, guys. So I just reuse that tape, grab the next sheet, layer over, line it up as best as possible, guys. I'm using multiple stencils. So you want to make sure that these guys are relatively close at least. And this is why I have the reference. And I take my time. I know we're on... Uh... <laughs> Time lapse, but trust me, guys. Uh, the first one is going to be the hardest. You're going to kind of figure out a bit of a system, and you will just sail on through through the rest, guys. As you can see here. No, this isn't magic. This is me real time. <laughs> All right, guys. So I did four of them. Gonna slap the reference down where he is still usable. Now that I am starting to cut, I'm not gonna be looking up at the wall. I'm gonna be looking down at my cutting board, guys. All right, well, the next thing we're gonna wanna do, guys, is just trim off that little bit of excess paper that we have overlapping from the stencils. Just makes it easier when we are cutting through. Um, and keep that in mind, those areas where you do have the masking tape behind the paper, guys. You're going to have to push a little hard down the knife. You might even have to chase it once or twice to make sure that you get through that masking tape on the rear end of the paper. Keep in mind you're cutting through two pieces of paper and masking tape, whereas for the majority of the stencil, you're just cutting through a piece of paper. All right, guys, I took the liberty of drawing out the, or should I say, tracing out the outline just so you can kind of see what I am cutting and we can get through this at a relatively quick pace. And that's kind of it, guys. I'm going to do this in layers as I typically tend to do. So we're going to call this dude layer numero uno, guys, number one. And when you're pulling it out, try to always pull away from those points, guys. And uh, watch... And turn off your uh, forced air heaters too, guys. Papers are blowing all over the place here. And take a good look at my right hand here, guys. I'm a lefty, so I am holding that blade in my left hand. And my right hand, those fingers are just kind of following that blade. Holding down the paper as I go. Um, They brace it, they hold it down. And if I'm getting into some of the tighter areas, guys, I get my fingers right next to it just to hold it down down to uh, help assist with these intricate cuts. Guys, rarely are you doing a straight cut when you're cutting stencils and this paper isn't very thick. And I'm just going to finish up cutting the uh, little, I don't know what you're going to call them, the, uh, I don't know, uh, fins? Uh, fins doesn't sound right. I know there's a dinosaur out there that has spine sails. <laughs> <laughs> don't sound right either. Cra the crests? Uh, the frill. That sounds a bit better. Skin flap? Terry fold? <laughs> Alright guys, let's move on. Now what I am doing here for your viewing pleasure and to make it a little easier, I don't typically do this, um, but I'm just sort of quickly drawing out with my darks where I plan to make my cuts. 
just so that you can kind of see the the thought process um I'm not putting a lot of detail into this stencil. One, it is crazy big, so it's going to allow for a lot of freehand. Oh, hey, check it out. Check it out, guys. I cut right through that stencil. What do you do? Oh, my God, problem. No, 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 no. We're good, guys. This is why we got masking tape. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put that tape right along that edge. Stick it on down. Chase that line out for a second time, and guys, we are looking good. That's it. Problem solved. And you can do that any area of your stencil if you've cut too far, or it starts to fall to pieces, guys. Just throw a little bit of masking tape on, you're good to go, guys. Cutting some of the really finer details here, guys. This is like sliver cuts. And as I was just about to get to, guys, before we had that little bit of a cut through on the stencil that we fixed, um, I would definitely put a lot more detail into my stencils when I am doing, say, two sides of a gas tank and I have to match one side to the other. Um, in this case, and with it being a dragon, an actual creature. Oh, hey, there's some more me using some masking tape to make some fixes and adjustments. Um, where was I? This is a fictional creature, guys. There, There's no such thing. Well, maybe there was. Uh, nobody can prove it. I think the Chinese had some pretty good theories. <laughs> I don't know, guys. I'm making this guy up out of my head. So when it comes to painting him... A lot of it's going to be made up out of my head. Now, I showed you a couple pieces of reference of actual dragons that other peoples have made up. But that wasn't where my reference started and stopped, guys. That wasn't where my research started and stopped, guys. Um, uh, would you believe that I took a lot of inspiration for the nose of this dragon from sea turtles, guys? And the horns came from some of the bearded dragons and other similar lizards. And of course, guys, when you're talking dragons and lizards, you've got to be going back to the prehistoric age and checking out the dinos, guys. There is a lot of goodies to be researched when you're doing dragons. Out of the true life, I'm pretty sure my theory is, is those Chinese, when they were building that great wall, man, they were digging to some of the depths of the earth that a lot of mankind wasn't getting down to. Hence, they have some of the eldest stories of dragons, which I would call dinosaur bones, guys, medieval. Get back into the building of castles and the digging of trenches again. Digging deep into that earth to get that stone. What do you come across? A dragon bone. Could you imagine what they would have thought if they found a T-Rex skull? Who knows? Who knows, guys? But this is my theory. So I always go to the dinosaurs when I have to come up with a dragon. And you will notice, guys, getting back to that stencil here, that I flip her over quite regularly. Um, especially when I'm doing the teeny tiny little sliver cuts. Sometimes I will only make one cut of that stencil on the one side, flip her over, uh, 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 another slip up, and I will cut the other side of that sliver on the reverse where I don't have any other lines to see but the cut I just put through it. Now this time, guys, I just cut a little sliver off of the tape that I have on my cutting board and then applied it to the stencil. A little different same result stencil was broken stencil is now fixed here we go another little triangle and i just plop her on down guys easy breezy all right this video is getting a little long at the 14 minute mark here guys so we're gonna time lapse and fly through the rest of this i think so basically that is that for the layer one now i am getting into layer number two guys and a good little tip is again line up layer one onto layer two to make sure that your lines are matching i would hate to see you spend all this time and then get onto your piece to only to find out that oh man that line ain't matching and you got a big black line where there should be some nice color fades. So take the time, 
spend the time. I've said it before, guys, and I'll say it again. It's not a race, guys. And in a lot of cases, believe it or not, I will spend more time cutting stencils than I actually spend spraying paint. All right, guys, the mouth is cut out and ready for bright white along with the eyeball. And next, guys, I am just going to cut a registration line. So basically, I'm just cutting the back here where the fin crest flare, whatever we called it. Um, and, and that allows me to butt up the other stencils and make sure that everything matches. And guys, when I was cutting out the mouth on our stencil layer number two, I realized that I had forgotten the detail on the inside of the mouth. So I just went back to stencil number one and just cutting out some of these uh, ridges for the inside, the roof of the mouth, and for the underside of the tongue. All right, guys, and with that guy wrapped up, we will move on to layer number three. Um, and this is just gonna be a virtual outline of where I want this dude to sort of take up space. Um, including the blast of fire, the majority of it, it's all going to be freehand over top. But um, again, this is what's going to map out the outline of my beast here, guys. And uh, a little bit of detail into the ear, cutting some darks that I wasn't able to get on the other stencils. Um, I do have one more, uh, one more full photocopy that I have not cut into, and I typically like to do that, guys. I like to keep an extra one just in case, and I am sure as we go on with this project, guys, I will find other areas, guys, that will require us to go back to the stencils just to cut some more detail. Um, and we have a whole hand that I have yet to really figure out, but we will get to that together guys i'm going to clean up for the day and that'll be that all right guys that's it for this one next one we'll tackle a little bit of the hand and we'll get to spraying some paint and mapping out this bad boy guys we'll do some whites and darks and we will get into some color in round four i believe we'll see how it goes stay tuned and as always guys like follow subscribe thanks for coming along for the ride Cheers! Part 3 is coming up where we start mapping out this sick little pup. Stay tuned!